I know a lot of you guys are fed up already with 2021. You guys are ready to cancel your 14 day free trial and send it back. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's a better predictor of what might be happening in the future. It's the King Tides, I'm gonna show you guys here in a second. All right, what's up everybody, Andre. Andre Restock Biz. Not only do I do taxes, retail, I do a whole bunch of other stuff. All right, guys, I'm out here. Um, like I said, I'm gonna talk to you guys today about the King Tide. I'm out here right now, getting ready to come up on, uh, I'm out on Redwood Shores, and a lot of people may not realize it, but you kind of look back this way. There's the Oracle building way back there in the back. There's a number of different uh, like incubators and stuff. You know, got townhomes here, all that good stuff. A lot of people don't realize that uh, Redwood Shores, um, when I was a little kid, uh, there was Marine World Africa USA, and it was located in Redwood Shores. So they actually uh, they actually took and uh, left this land here, and they went ahead and uh, went up to Vallejo, and that's where they moved Marine World, you know. So Redwood Shores is kind of the aftermath of uh, where Marine World used to be. And uh, if you kind of look at, um, you know, the Oracle uh, complex that they have, that's kind of basically where the entrance was originally to uh, Marine World. So what I'm doing right now is, uh, I've never really paid much attention before in the past, but I've started to notice a lot more when I'm out walking and stuff, you know, the uh, tidal movements. There's a lot of times I go out when the tide is high, when the tide is low, and uh, today is really no different. You know, so what I'm doing right now is uh, the king tides are coming in. And so what is a king tide? King tide is the is the, the biggest tide that you're gonna get. It usually comes a few times a year. And there's a lot of it's based upon alignment of the moon, how close it is to earth, etc. And the gravitational pull of the moon only has an effect on really the water for uh, the earth, you know? So this is kind of a predictor of Ultimately, you know, with the, being a king tide is how bad we might be affected one day by, uh, you know, global warming and rising sea level. You can kind of see right now, <clears throat> the king tide will hit today at about uh, 10.02 or so. And right now I'm about 35, 40 minutes away from, you know, the peak of the tide. I'm actually walking over to the, the Bay Trail. It's a trail that essentially goes around the entire bay. You can walk it, bike it, ride it. Yes, I'm kind of walking into it, but you guys can kind of see the water moving right now. It's coming in, uh, you know, pretty strong. So I'm gonna work my way back to the back part of the trail. All right, so hang on a second. All right, I'm continuing to walk out here. I'm gonna talk to you guys this whole time with my mask on. There's a lot of people on the trail. You can kind of hear underneath me here. There's kind of a water spillway that takes water from one side to the other. But the water is uh, definitely uh, rising for sure, you know, so. And I think a lot of us, um, I guess one of the big things is there's a lot of scientists right now that are really trying to uh, look at and predict, you know, what type of an effect the, the rising of the sea will have on, you know, people, especially in low-lying areas, people that live along the coast, etc. you know, um, at some point in, 5, 10, 15, 20 years or so, which is kind of what the king tide predicts, it's gonna give us an idea potentially of what may be affected. And I think a lot of people have seen, even in places like San Francisco, you kind of see right here, the water's getting pretty high. There's an incredible amount of scum on the water as well. The ducks are out there, you know, floating around. You can see the San Mateo Bridge in the background. But one of the things they want people to do is, as the scientists work to try to get an idea of how this is affecting, you know, the world and individual municipalities and, you know, people that may live by the coast. They want you actually to take pictures and put up hashtags, you know, along with those pictures. That way they can kind of identify, you know, the effects that the king tide might've been having on where you're living at, you know. So I'm definitely gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna tag it to the, I think it's called uh, Bay Point or Bayport out here, it's on the San Francisco uh, Bay Trail. 
I gotta look it up when I get back, you know, but it's definitely gonna tag the area that way they can kind of use this information. So the thing is they can't be everywhere, but they can rely upon people to kind of help them out. You know, kind of like the SETI project is designed to help solve, you know, celestial problems and stuff by using the background energy of people's computers. By people being out here on the water, you know, taking pictures and showing video of where they're at and where they're located at. It allows the scientists to use that data and those data points to help make uh, predictions and see what type of effect that the uh, king tide would have on them. So I'll we'll show you guys some more stuff here. In All right, second. I'm out here. I'm still uh, continuing to walk on the uh, Bay Trail. The part I'm trying to get to, if you want to call it my rally point, I don't know if you guys can see it way back there in the back. You know, there's kind of an elevated platform over there by those homes. It allows you to kind of look out and see into the bay. So I think from looking at my watch right now, uh, let's see, let's see what time it is. It's about 9.30. The king tide is supposed to be at that point somewhere around. 10.02, so I'll have plenty of time to make it back there and uh, check out the King Tide. You know, so continue with me on the journey. You know, you kind of look over here, the water still continues to rise. You can see the water still coming in based upon the waves and the current. You know, it's kind of funny. I looked out the window earlier today, somewhere around 7.30 or so, and the tide was completely out, you know, so it's come a lot in. It's very exciting. I'll tell you guys to watch it. If you guys ever get a chance, if you ever never have, if you live by water, you know, or something that's affected by the ocean, you know, to go out and watch the tide come in and go out. It's definitely a very exciting thing. You can take a look over there and see. It's not gonna, the water's not definitely gonna get high enough to be able to breach the area here where I'm gonna be, you know, swimming out of here. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how high it gets. All right, here I go. I'm uh, coming off of one of the feeding tributaries to the Bay Trail. So if you look, the Bay Trail goes that way off of our distance. And I'm coming onto the Bay Trail, you know, right here. You kind of take a look and see. That's the sign. This thing has eventually, if you stay on it, will allow you to get around uh, most of the uh, bay, basically circle it. So I'm still working my way over to the rally point. All right, I am coming to a harsh realization that I may have missed the, uh, King Tide, oh man. So I guess I didn't realize this is my mistake. All right guys, I'm checking back in here. All right, so uh, <laughs> man, uh, this this uh, title quest for the uh, King Tide was definitely an epic fail yesterday. I'm cutting back in here real quick. And uh, I was able to turn it around by coming back the next day. So this is what happened. So essentially, and I'll tell you guys right here, I'm over here at the Belmont Slough. You can see right across the street is where Oracle is. You can see where the tide this is probably i've come out here and walk all the time this is probably the highest i've ever seen the water you know and you can see it going all back there we're about maybe three to five minutes away from high tide so this is probably about as high as it's going to get you can see that there's not really water flowing in or out so what i found out yesterday is around here in the redwood shores area they have a lot of uh, probably uh, the easiest thing to call them are, is passive uh, lagoons and i wasn't really aware of that so these passive lagoons just kind of sit there and they're not necessarily affected by high tide or low tide as it occurs on a daily basis. They do let some water in and some water out, but it's at such a slow rate that the water level pretty much stays constant. So when I was out actually walking, trying to get to some parts where I can see the tide, those are the areas that I went to, which were the lagoon areas. And so of course they weren't affected. So by the time I got over to this area, the tide had already started to go out. So. One of the things I had learned is if you're gonna do tide watching, it's, there's a couple things to do. One is download an app. There's tons of apps that are on the app store right now, you know, that you can use. And it'll tell you the exact location where you're at based upon GPS coordinates. You can see what the high tide is, the low tide is, and uh, you'll be able to get those that information. And then the other thing you can do as well is make sure that whatever area you're trying to watch the tide in, that it's actually connected to the main, you know, bay or ocean. Because if it's not, it's not going to have any effect on how the water rises and raises and lowers. So this here, like I said, I'm over here by um, Oracle, and it's the Belmont Slough. So the Belmont Slough, if you look on the map, it runs right out to the bay. 
So um, if I look out and at this during different parts of the day, I can see the water at high tide or low tide. And it's pretty amazing. Like I said, this is probably the highest I've ever seen the water. And if the king tides are a predictor of where the water levels will be in uh, 10 or five or 15 years based upon you know global warming and all those other type of factors, at least it's safe to say that we're probably a number of uh, decades away from where the water would be so high that it would breach these areas and we'd have to take, you know, other uh, measures. You know, you can kind of see over there, there's kind of a little low-lying area that the water's maybe about a foot or two, or about two feet away from the top of the walkway. But the majority of it, you know, you can see here is uh, not necessarily affected. You know, so I don't know if people are really uh, paying attention to the king tide over here at the Belmont Slough. But at least I came out here to uh, try to redeem myself. And uh, I'm definitely taking, as I'm doing a lot more walks now, I'm definitely taking a lot more interest in nature and things that are around me and paying attention to how the environment, you know, uh, is affected by, you know, daily changes and, you know, atmospheric conditions, you know, the sun, moon, stars, that type of stuff, you know. So it's definitely something, like I said, I'm very interested in, in being able to see. So I'm excited to, to take a look at the uh, king tide out here. You know, and uh, like I said, probably at this point right now, we're probably at peak tide. And from here, the water's going to start to uh, recede and go back out into the bay, then eventually, you know, back out into the ocean. But I'm excited that I did get to see the, the king tide. And uh, I'm uh, hopefully you guys will get some uh, joy out of seeing this. And, and I'll tell you what, um, but my plans are for the next king, king tide, I actually have a location where I can set up a time lapse camera that will overlook the entire uh, Belmont Slough. And uh, it's going to allow you to see the actual water rise and uh, fall. And uh, I think that'll be kind of interesting. I've never done a time lapse you know, video before on my iPhone, but it's something I'm definitely looking forward to. You know, so I'll be able to keep an eye on that with the, uh, with the uh, using the, the title app. And then one last thing, too, is that even though the king tide happened yesterday, the tide rise today is the same as it was yesterday, about 9.4 feet for this area over here. You know, so there's no difference in, um, distinguishable difference in uh, what the tide would have been like yesterday versus what the tide is like, you know, today. So I'll give you guys one last, you know, um, here right behind the uh, Redwood Shores Library. But you can kind of see over there where the King Tide is. That's the Oracle Complex. You can see up there on top where the Oracle, uh, you know, World Cup boat is. You can see the ducks out there having a good old time. And, uh, you know, you can see the entire uh, king tide here in uh, full effect. So take care, guys. Remember to like this video, especially if you see me on uh, Instagram and on uh, Facebook. But most importantly, like the video and uh, please subscribe to my channel. If you guys see this on uh, on uh, YouTube, I'm trying to grow my uh, followership and I'm getting some videos now that are getting, you know, close to 4,000 and 1,500 uh, views on them. You know, so I'm trying to produce content that people may have an interest in. Some things you may do, some things you may not, but it definitely helps out the algorithm get my video out there and allowing people to be able to see some information. So take care, guys. Be safe. And I know we're coming up on the uh, <laughs> end of the 14-day uh, free trial for uh, 2021. But, you know, guys, keep faith and uh, don't give up and uh, still try to find a way to make it happen. Peace, guys. We'll be in touch. Hey guys, thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end of this video. Visit me directly at andrereese.biz. Four things to do, like, follow, subscribe, hit that bell. Stay safe guys, lift the glass to freedom, stay woke and don't get TikTok. Take care, I will see you guys in the next video.